Uh, this is question 8 part B on the January 2011 BY1 paper. Um, this, uh, this long answer question then is uh, split into two parts. Uh, the first part is uh, looking at uh, inhibitors, while the second part is looking at uh, immobilized enzymes in industrial processes. All right, and it's, uh, part two is purely on the advantages actually of immobilized enzymes. Um, so let's uh, let's start with part one first, uh, which is worth seven uh, marks. Uh, basically, there are um, two types of inhibitors. Um, one is the competitive inhibitor. The other is the non-competitive inhibitor. And uh, uh, relative to the uh, question now is that both inhibitors actually reduce the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction uh, so that's a, just a, a bold statement that you can make in your your answer there uh, to get a mark actually okay um, so let's just run through some key points about the inhibitors uh, starting with the competitive uh, inhibitor uh, now these inhibitors um, uh, competitive inhibitors actually bind uh, to the active site remember so um, you can describe them uh, or their structure being um, sort of partially complementary to the uh, active site uh, sometimes you know you can just say that the uh, the competitive inhibitor is complementary uh, to the active site but but it's not um, perfectly complementary but it will have regions that are complementary uh, to the active site uh, you could say that it is structurally similar to the substrate okay but it's not identical in shape to the substrate okay so the uh, competitive uh, inhibitor then competes uh, with the substrate for the active site of the enzyme now if the inhibitor does bind to the active site uh, so if the inhibitor uh, does bind uh, to the active site uh, of an enzyme it will actually block the active site and uh, it'll prevent then the uh, the normal substrate uh, from binding um, so if the active site is blocked um, you don't actually get the formation of enzyme substrate complexes um, you, you know, depending on the concentration of inhibitor and the concentration of substrate, you may get some enzyme substrate complex in, complexes being formed, but they're certainly fewer in number anyway. Okay, uh, so there's some key facts about the competitive inhibitor. Uh, one further fact, uh, this is something that I've brought up a couple of times in previous uh, videos on exam techniques, um, that a competitive inhibitor can have its effects reduced by adding more substrate. Okay, now I haven't gone into much detail about how that occurs in these uh, video tutorials on um, uh, answering exam questions but I do have a video um, tutorial where I do explain that concept uh, further all right um, so that's really the competitive inhibitor done with really uh, the non-competitive uh, inhibitor then is uh, uh, an inhibitor that is not in any way um, shaped similar or complementary to the active site uh, and it bears no resemblance to the structure or shape of the substrate either uh, so this inhibitor actually binds to the enzyme but it does not bind to the active site it binds at a different uh, region okay now once a non-competitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme uh, the enzyme uh, will actually become denatured and the enzyme will no longer function okay it's been completely uh, destroyed the reason why it's been destroyed is the um, non-competitive inhibitor has completely altered the shape uh, of the enzyme and hence uh, the active site so uh, the active site is no longer complementary uh, to the substrate so you cannot get any enzyme substrate complexes being formed and and that's how the rate uh, is dramatically reduced uh, with uh, these uh, non-competitive inhibitors okay and uh, just for good measure you know you could then mention that a non-competitive inhibitor 
um, is not uh, or its effects then are not altered uh, by adding more substrate uh, molecules okay and that's because the, the enzyme is completely denatured all right so uh, there's some sort of background some key points uh, about enzyme uh, inhibitors that uh, you should be bringing out uh, in this essay okay now um, you may if you want to draw out some graphs to show the effects of competitive and non-competitive inhibitors all right um, there's nothing in the mark scheme that specifically says there's marks um, for drawing these graphs okay but it may be a good idea to put them in um, they are listed and drawn out in the notes uh, accompanying the app uh, make sure if you do draw them you label the axes correctly all right and uh, you draw the curves correctly as well um, the labeling of the axes then uh, along the Y you would have a, a rate of reaction or a rate of enzyme activity something like that and along the uh, the X axis you would actually have uh, substrate concentration um, for these graphs where you're looking at the effect of inhibitors do not put uh, enzyme concentration along the X that is wrong it needs to be uh, substrate concentration um, okay so like I say you can put those graphs in if you if you like but make sure they're right make sure you label the axes correctly um, let's go on to part two then about the advantages of using immobilized enzymes in industrial processes um, again it's three marks we've uh, we've covered these advantages in previous uh, videos on uh, answering exam questions um, I'll quickly run through uh, some of the uh, the advantages again they, they, they're more stable at higher temperatures uh, they can withstand greater uh, ranges of pH okay uh, the enzymes can be reused um, you can actually put several different enzymes together all right to, to create different products um, the the product that you're making isn't contaminated by the enzyme because it's it's immobilized uh, probably in a gel bead okay uh, so any of those advantages you can bring in there there's quite there's a few more advantages but uh, they're all listed uh, in the notes uh, in the app all right so um, I hope that uh, was of some help in regard to background information about inhibitors and immobilized enzymes. So uh, as I've done before, I'll, uh, I'll type out uh, an answer, all right, which I uh, think will get full marks. OK, but again, you need to keep on practicing these essays yourself. Uh, don't just stick with uh, my answers and the way I've written it. OK. Um, you'll have your own way of writing things down and your own style you need to practice that as long as you get used to writing these long answer essays and getting all the key points down okay I'll type this answer out now and then we'll have a look at the mark scheme um, I've now written in the answer for the uh, uh, inhibitor and immobilized enzyme part of this question okay uh, so basically, I, I don't think I've really typed in anything different than what I've mentioned previously. Okay, I've started off by uh, uh, mentioning there are two types of inhibitors and state the names, competitive and non-competitive. I've said both inhibitors reduce the rate of an enzyme-catalyzed reaction. Okay, then I've started describing the competitive inhibitor. All right, so I've made sure what I have told the examiner that what I'm describing is the competitive inhibitor don't just start describing things about inhibitors without stating which type of inhibitor you're talking about uh, the examiner uh, wants to be told everything and if you don't tell him what you're writing about you, you you're likely not to get the marks okay so a, a competitive inhibitor has a shape that is complementary in shape to the active site of the enzyme the competitive inhibitor will bind to the active site of the enzyme and block the active site so prevent the substrate from binding uh, to the active site this will reduce the number of enzyme substrate complexes that can be formed and as a result the rate of reaction uh, catalyzed by the enzyme will reduce okay 
Um, lastly, then on competitive inhibitors, I've just said the effect of a competitive uh, inhibitor on the rate of an enzyme catalyzed reaction can be reduced if higher concentration of substrate is added. Uh, don't just say you've added more substrate. Uh, the examiner doesn't like that. He wants to hear that you've added uh, a higher concentration of uh, substrate. Uh, I've just noticed um, uh, here um, I've actually uh, missed out the word uh, inhibitor there. Okay, so I've got competitive in, uh, but I haven't got in inhibitor. Um, try not to do that in an exam. Okay, uh, don't rush it. Take your time. Um, but I think that should be okay anyway, because uh, we're still talking about the competitive inhibitor. But it's not good to uh, to miss out words like that. That could potentially uh, lose you, uh, you lose your marks. Okay, then uh, let's move on to the non-competitive uh, inhibitor. Uh, this binds to the enzyme at a site that is not the active site. The non-competitive inhibitor is not complementary in shape to the active site. Uh, the non-competitive inhibitor will change the shape of the enzyme and the active site. So the active site is no longer complementary to the substrate. Very important. And have you noticed I'm constantly saying and quoting what type of inhibitor I'm talking about? Um, so moving on, this will prevent the substrate from binding to the active site and so uh, preventing the formation of enzyme substrate complexes. That then will result in reducing the rate of the enzyme catalyzed uh, reaction. Uh, lastly, on uh, non competitive inhibitors, I've just stated that increasing the concentration of substrate will not reduce the effect of the non competitive inhibitor. Okay. Um, all right. Lastly, then, I've just stated three advantages of immobilized enzymes. Okay. Um, I've said that the uh, product is not contaminated with the enzyme. The immobilized enzyme is more stable at higher temperatures. And the immobilized enzymes can be reused. All right, so there are three advantages of immobilized enzymes in industrial uh, processes. Whatever you do, don't go quoting things like um, the immobilized enzyme is very sensitive. Because that relates to the biosensor. All right, which is a medical use. OK, the, the question clearly asks for advantages in industrial processes. OK, so, you know, uh, be aware of what the examiner is asking and stick to answering his question. Right. Um, let's have a quick look at uh, the mark scheme then. OK, uh, pretty straightforward, I think. All right. Um, so I'll just... Uh, scroll down in a second to the immobilized enzyme uh, mark scheme but these are all the marking points now in view uh, for the um, inhibitor section okay so uh, the next one then are several uh, features of immobilized enzymes and their advantages and um, that really is uh, uh, the question uh, done